know I'm going live every Sunday on YouTube and painting some loose things in my sketchbook. And this time I wanted to go a bit further than just a page with a sketchbook on one side. And I wanted to make a complete spread. So this is what we are going to paint today. And this is not a full tutorial because it took me quite a long time to do it, but it will be one of the tutorial in my monthly membership that is beginning on November 1st. So if you're one of the founding members, this is what you're gonna get this month. If you want to join the fun, you have a link under the video. You're welcome to join. Now let's go get this squirrel and give him something to eat. I have painted this cute squirrel during a YouTube live painting session and you have the link to the video under the description here so you can paint your own. But maybe you can watch this video first so you can pre-plan unlike what I did because I painted this first and then I decided to do something with it. And what I did was to prepare a setup, a composition in Procreate. Just because I wanted this to be really cohesive. So I've been for what is a squirrel eating usually. I thought it was fun. And now my goal is to get this onto that. Of course, I could trace it, but this time I feel like drawing. So I'm taking a ruler, drawing my frames and drawing what I have planned in Procreate. Get back to my palette I had during the live and that's cool because I have already the colors I will be using. And also I have a bit of the blue left, which is still fresh, by the way, because it was in the fridge. Now let's paint the blue background. I have the same tube that I've been using for the background of the squirrel during the live painting session. So I will be painting everything, removing the tape as long as I go, but it's very tedious to look me do that, so I will skip this. And if you don't like visible brush strokes on your background, do what you can to avoid it. Rub the paint while it's fresh and control the amount of water in your brush. If you look closely, you will see the brush strokes at some point, that's inevitable. It's not digital, it's handmade and that's fine being handmade to have visible brush strokes. And you have a link in the description under the video where I talk only about consistency, gouache consistency. It's the main issue with gouache. It's all about control of the amount of water and control of the amount of paint on your brush. Now let's remove the tape. And always begin by the last one you placed, which is this one. And tear it off away from you and very parallel to the paper. And go very slowly. If you feel that this is tearing up the paper, you can still heat the tape a bit with a hairdryer so it will soften the stickness of it. I said away from me, this way. Ah, slight leak and that's great because this is where I wanted the paint to overlap and on my initial drawing the grass is coming outside of the frame so let's do this and also it's good because it will help me to hide my mistake my little problem and also what I could do is get those two together I feel they are appealing me like join me join me please yeah that's cool but <laughs> there is a slight bump let's say it's not perfect it's handmade ready to go further now and i have to maybe plan a bit ahead before diving in i think what would be interesting is to make a large mix of this green and place some leaves here and there with this same green because i like to have the same color that is moving in different parts on the painting i don't like to have isolated colors so to speak once your mix is made you can protect your painting with some sheet of paper so you don't damage everything and you can begin to paint the leaves 
I like to make two different greens and blend them a bit together so my leaves have more variety. Now it's time to go for some fall colors and I'm using what I have on my palette actually, blending the colors into each other. Ooh, I have a ton of paint on my brush, really a ton. This is just to make the turn around here. Ah, made a mistake again. Should have made this one first. So really you need to plan ahead and to keep on to your plan, to stick to it. Not like me. Now, I have these greens here. Um, it gives me some indication. I think this green should be coming a bit this way also. If you're painting something from this video, please let me know and tag me on social media. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, not Twitter, that's too much, um, but you can find me easily, I think. Now is the time to be very cautious. This leaf is under the pole. And I need to be really precise. I need to make the turn around the pole. And also you are painting on an existing paint, so you don't want to rub too much. Otherwise you will be lifting the paint below. So use a very creamy consistency and try to apply, apply sorry, try to apply the paint with a single brush stroke and no rubbing and go as close as I can, and then I will need some very small brush. And I'm going to the edge of the pole because I will later on <laughs> add some loose hair on top, but I wait for having painted all my leaves before doing that. Of course, if you are painting this in one painting session, I mean you are painting squirrel after everything it's easier and i think that's it for this color from time to time it's important that you assess your painting i mean by this you take a look from above and you look at the balance and the colors i think my greens are really floating quite well and i feel here it's maybe an orangey leaf and maybe here as well and here Maybe another one here, I don't know. But first I want to place the strong colors. I mean, there is a dark brown here in the chestnut and also inside the pine cones and in the shadows here. I'm not sure everything is dry, so I will turn my sketchbook. And this is very, very strong here. And I left the little tip here. Yes. <laughs> so close. Tiny bit of greenish here. Just a reflection of the grass under the cap. And this color, which is kind of a green something, I will use it for the envelope of chestnut. I want to fill everything with this kind of greenish something and I will make the needles coming from it, you know? The thing where you get your fingers ah! on it when you try to collect the chestnut. And vary the angle of your needles. Time for a stop. Where am I? What are the colors I want to see? Shall I compare to my drawing? Yes. And um, you know what? My initial plan was much more orange because I was using the photo of my squirrel, which was a bit orange, but here in real life, it's not orange. So I have adapted my values, my saturation to the actual squirrel and not to the drawing I made, which is wrong, actually, if you look only at the intensity of the colors. So I need some warm up because it's a bit boring now. I don't like it that much. 
Remember, thick paint. Don't rub too much or you will lift up the blue. This color needs to go somewhere else. And it will be a bit inside the pine cones and also a bit on the mushrooms and also a bit on the chestnut. Okay, so now I have a color that is everywhere. Okay, red, some red. And I don't want a pure clean red. I want something that will fit with the rest of the painting. And some dots for the berries. So I'm not very precious about it, just some loose tap 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 with the tip of your brush. Everything is dry, fully dry. And I'm sure I want to add details with colored pencils. I feel like this part is very detailed, but this one is a bit more loose. And I'd like to integrate the things and also the leaves need detail as well. Anyway, so it will be the time for me to evaluate where I need to darken some parts, where I need to lighten. It's really a good way to fix your values. I could do this with gouache also, but I don't know, today I feel like I can use some colored pencils. One important thing is to have a very sharpened pencil. Ah! <laughs> no, I didn't want that to happen. Darker, I forgot to do that. Should have done that with the paint itself instead. I think I'm good with it. You have a lot of details. Paint, colored pencils, some cute ladybug. Yeah, I love it. It's really fun.